the type of person that we're And talking. welcome back to On TV. So happy to have this afternoon in our studios Matthew <laughs> Shoemaker, who's the incumbent in Ward 3, and Winona Hutchinson, who is a candidate for Ward 3 in the upcoming October election. And uh, thanks, both of you, for coming by. I appreciate your time. Uh, Winona, talk to us a little bit about the, the, the open letter, basically, that you, you wrote um, indicating there's you have some concerns about some resolutions. Correct. Um, what actually happened is when I was reading the newsroom that's issued through the City Hall about the um, a call for feedback from local businesses, in the newsroom uh, release, release uh, it actually mentioned that this was a, a resolution that was tabled back in November of 2017. And I'm thinking, wow, that's a really long time. That's eight months. So my first question was, is there more? Like, how many more resolutions are still outstanding? So I was looking at this not necessarily as a candidate for Ward 3, but as a taxpayer, because the council is voted in to be stewards of, you know, the city and their monies and things like that. So I'm thinking, what's going on? So I contacted the city clerk's office and they gave me a list as of June 30th of this year and there's 66 resolutions that are still outstanding. And I'm thinking, hmm, that's a concern for me. It, so you found it a lot? I found it an absolute lot. Considering back in February of 2015, there was only 25. Ah. So why, why the difference? Why the change? What is happening um, with city council that these are still on the books? Matthew, uh, with regards to uh, resolutions, maybe just indicate to us what exactly that means technically. I mean, it's not an idea and everybody votes on it. Right, so it's something that you, two councillors would have to move and second mm -hmm. put forward. And, uh, you know, it could be an idea, it could be a, a, a declaration, it could be a uh, uh, tax-saving uh, concept, it could be to form a committee to do something. So, it, you know, it's, it's how council performs its own actions. Um, and uh, this has, I would say, been a, an active term of council. We've gotten a lot of resolutions. I myself have brought 150 of them throughout the term. Uh, and, and other councillors have brought uh, multiple uh, as well. So, you know, I, I guess I, I don't have the stats on how many resolutions previous council terms uh, had, but I know that this uh, council term has been particularly active. Now, with regards to the outstanding ones, you know, 66 are, are still outstanding as we get closer and closer, of course, to the municipal election. Um, is, should we assume that that's an, um, a, an inaction on these resolutions? Well, I mean, uh, I think if, if anybody had been sort of uh, watching throughout the term, they would have seen on July 16th council meeting that we, uh, you know, we, we uh, were very stern with our staff for having this number of uh, resolutions outstanding. So it's not that we are happy with the number that are outstanding, but, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is if we want uh, the resolutions to be answered more quickly, it's probably going to mean more staff. And as a taxpayer, that concerns me. So I, you know... I know that there are priorities of council when issues uh, become priorities or, or when something's taking too long, it comes back to council every quarter and we have an opportunity to say, finish this quicker, finish that quicker. So it's, you know, it, it's on the table every three or four months. So do you think that um, there are outstanding resolutions that get carried forward from one to, to the next? Yeah, no, there definitely are. In mm -hmm. fact, I think one or two of the resolutions that are remain outstanding are from the previous term of council. So Pat Mick or, or uh, Terry Sheehan or uh, various other councillors who are no longer there had put these forward. Uh, but it's an action of council. Once it's adopted, it's an action of council. So whether or not the particular councillor is there, it's no longer. Oh, that was uh, going to be my next yes, question. No so it doesn't matter if they're not there. Correct. So it just keeps going through um, sort of the the proper channels. That's right. In fact, one of the ones that had been outstanding for a long time was sort of on hold, if you can call it that, because there was litigation pending over one of the issues. So there are reasons sometimes that these take so long, and it's just a matter of, you know, uh, th that's explained at council, in fact, every three or four months when, when the questions get asked. Now, with regards, Winona, to these outstanding resolutions, is there something in particular you'd like uh, to see happen? Well, for one, I would like to see a slowdown on the amount of resolutions that are being presented because some of them are clearly, and we can go through Mr. Shoemaker's motions because I've broken them down and I've analyzed the number of motions that are actually done and how many of them actually create an economic benefit for Sault Ste. Marie or for the core services. And there's not a lot. It's less than 10% of the 150 motions that he's presented. So my question then of council is, 
is it too much quantity versus quality? Are we prioritizing a little, you know, haphazardly? Maybe we should take more control on how we're prioritizing what's coming across the table at council. What needs to be done? Setting actual guidelines and due dates because quarter three of 2018 is not a due date. It's not accountable. It's not measurable. Do you know what I mean? So we need to have more controls in city council that way. So that way everyone's accountable not just poor Mr. <laughs> you know, Shoemaker, sure, who unfortunately, sure. you know, because I mean, you have, and I commend 100% the initiative that he's taken. Absolutely. 100% do not knock that whatsoever. However, I don't know if it's just a matter of what's being presented, the number of things being presented, the prioritization of it, establishing due dates, clear get di uh, guidelines, that kind of stuff. Is everything really needed? 48%, for, not 48%, there was 48 of Mr. Um, Shoemaker's finished resolutions that were reports. Oh, so I what see. happened with the reports, that kind of thing. 11 of the motions that he did present are just natural progressions of original motions, like the garbage and you know things like that. Um, three of them were thank yous, which are important, 100%. But again, let's look at what we're presenting. Let's make sure it's clear, is it an economic benefit to the city or its core services, because that's what we're elected for, and make sure that we're progressing on a more feasibly time management accountable way, and that's what I'm expecting. Matthew, do you think there's too much red tape? Uh, well, no, I think there is definitely a need to have our staff, you know, get to these things in a timely manner. I don't disagree sure. with that. Uh, as for, you know, slowing down on the number of resolutions brought, that, that's a definite no on my part. If I'm re-elected, I'll, I'll be just as aggressive next term as I have been this past term. And, and Ms. Hutchinson says that there is less than 10% that have a real economic uh, benefit. You know, I, I dispute that number. I could think of, uh, if I brought 150, I could think of at least 15 uh, that uh, have an economic impact. So, you know, we could go through the 150 of them that I've brought this term uh, one by one if we had uh, a couple hours. But, uh, you know, I would say that my website, matthewshoemaker.ca, has them all there. People can go and judge for themselves whether or not they think that uh, uh, some of those uh, initiatives have a, a direct economic benefit or not. And as I mentioned, once they're passed by council, they become a, 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 an action of council. So whether I proposed them or someone else proposed them or I seconded or moved it, it is uh, council that is giving the directives. So whether or not you know I, I brought it or somebody else brought it, it's a council motion and, and it's something council wants to see happen. I think that's a good point to make because I think that um, as I understand it, once the resolution is put forward, doesn't necessarily mean that the councillor can have it start like that day. Is that correct? Yes, of course. So it's, uh, you know, we don't control our staff's workload. That's done by the CAO. We can uh, direct the CAO to do things more quickly or less quickly, but that, of course, oh, would okay. be more motions that's, that's uh, and more resolutions. Right. So uh, we, uh, you know, uh, leave the direction to the CAO and we uh, appraise his uh, performance once a year in a, in a performance appraisal. So he's, he's the prioritizer. That's right, unless oh. council specifically sets a priority on this and says, this is your top priority. Oh, okay, I didn't realize that. Did you realize that, Winona? Um, yeah, I did know of mm -hmm. parts of that, but my question is still, what can council do to make it more efficient? Perhaps when they're making the resolutions, indicate a timeline. So that way it helps the CAO reach those prioritization, you know, that the decision making to prioritize the amount of motions that are going through. Because again, if there's no deadline and if there's no date, then things can just sit. For example, you know, one of the outstanding resolutions is the support of the Truth and Reconciliation Act. Are you saying now that since it's been on the books since 2015, it no longer has the same value as when it was first presented? That's the th question. So my question is, are we presenting stuff of true value at that time? Or can it wait a little bit and get what we have under control and dealt with and then introduce new, new business? So maybe a follow-up? Well, I would, you know, specifically on that resolution, and, and this is the problem that, that Ms. Hutchinson has identified a problem, quite correctly, uh, but isn't really proposing a solution because had she seen the July 16th council meeting, she would have seen that the truth and reconciliation motion, in fact, was reported on at that very council meeting, and they have uh, changed the committee structure, uh, and it is going to be a, uh, a uh, leadership circle involving our, uh, our First Nations uh, neighbors, uh, the mayor's office, 
and some city staff. So that motion... There is movement. There, there is movement. That motion, in fact, probably won't be on the next uh, list of, of outstanding resolutions because it has been dealt with. So uh, it's, it's a matter of uh, making sure that the information you're conveying is uh, right. It's interesting the, the amount of protocol involved. I Correct. have no idea. And I was aware of the July 16th mm -hmm. meeting. I was aware of that. But the point is the fact that we have things sitting on the books since 2015. I've met with Mr. Sayers. I am from the Anishinaabe community. So I'm aware of what's going on in our community. And I, I'm just making a point that had this started the bend, at the onset of, and not just that resolution, any resolution, have some, some form of timeline involved, then we wouldn't be playing catch up at the end of it. It's like with any business plan, anything you do, you set goals, it has to have a timeline, it has to be measurable, and then you can move forward. You can't recheck your steps if you don't have those guidelines in place. And that's what my point is. Otherwise, we're not giving the value to those motions that are still on the books, the value that they should have had when they were first presented. And that's what my point is. Mm -hmm. I guess I would say that that's not the role of council. The role of, that's a micromanaging. In fact, if you're setting time uh, that a report has to be done by, uh, you're oh, micromanaging staff. So you know hmm. this, the 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 trigger on this uh, this uh, press release Ms. Hutchinson had was the fact that we had a survey go out. Well, m did it take from November to June to develop the survey? It probably did. They had to get the questions right. They had to make sure they weren't uh, impartial or they weren't partial in their questions. Uh, so I would say you know all that stuff takes time you have to gather input from your various departments the community development department public works department your planning department downtown association probably had some input so you know it's not that these things happen I, w I would love to see these things happen more quickly of course uh, but it's not the role of council to say uh, this must be done by uh, January 1st because you're gonna get a worse product well, really interesting conversation. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Could talk about things like this um, for hours and hours. We'll be keeping a close eye on you guys during the uh, campaign. Best of luck. Thanks so much Thanks. for coming in. Appreciate it. We'll take this break. We'll be right back.